Hey, we're on to the last one of practice sheet number two. So practice number two, problem number five. Hey, we're almost done with this uh, practice sheet. So we're doing stoichiometry, mass to mass equations. And again, here's all of our steps. Make sure that you, again, you know these steps without having to see that because you may not see that on, on your assessment. Okay, on your test, they may not be there. We also need to know that when we do this, we know that one mole equals the molar mass uh, of whatever atom or compound or whatever we're talking about, whatever element, whatever the that uh, weighs is going to be the equal to one mole, and we have to calculate that out. Uh, as always, we need to show our work on every single one of these uh, types of problems in order to get credit uh, for the problem. So let's go ahead and read the problem. The problem says uh, hydrogen peroxide decomposes, which means it breaks down to produce oxygen gas and water. Okay, so what mass of hydrogen peroxide, which has the formula of H2O2, must decompose to produce 0 0.77 grams of water? So we have it on that. So we can go back and forth, it doesn't matter. But the first thing that we always have to do is come up with our skeleton equation. So let's go ahead and start our skeleton equation. And again, we have hydrogen peroxide. Here is the formula. So we're going to go ahead, and I think the easiest way to do that is just go ahead and copy that. And then we're just going to paste it in there. Okay. And we know that it decomposes, so we don't need anything else. That's our reactants. So we're going straight to the products. And it's going to do oxygen gas and water. H. Oh. Now, again, uh, I didn't do this right away, but we have an element all by itself. And any time that we have an element by itself, we have to say, is it diatomic? Is it one of those seven elements that are diatomic? Well, I know it is diatomic, but how do we figure that out? Again, if you remember, we go to the periodic table. And we have seven elements on the period table that are diatomic. Nitrogen, oxygen, which is the one we're talking about, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. And you say, hey, Mr. Nelson, that's only six. You're right. They make a seven on the periodic table, but we have to add hydrogen, which is right over here on the periodic table. So let's go back to our, our question. And we know that it is diatomic. So now once we have this skeleton equation, we have to balance this equation. So let's go ahead and put down what we have of each one on each side. So I have uh, hydrogen on this side. I have oxygen on that side. That's all that I have, just those two elements. So we're going to tab this over here, and we're going to put hydrogen on this side. And we're going to put oxygen on this side. Now how many hydrogens do we have on each side? of the arrow or the yield sign. So I have two hydrogens here. Oxygens, I have two. I go to this side, I have two hydrogens, but I have how many oxygens? I have, oh, I have three oxygens. So I have three. Now this one, say we have to fix the uh, <clears throat> we have to fix the oxygen because the hydrogen is already done. So we're going to go to the oxygen. The easiest way to do this is notice that this side only can be even, while the product side can be odd. So we need to make the product side even. The easiest way to do that is let's just go ahead and put a 2 right there. Now I have 1, 2, plus these 2 over here. I have 4 oxygens on that side. So I'm going to get rid of that. So I'm going to chase it over to this side. Or before I chase it over to that side, I also have to say, oh, I have four hydrogens. So that has to change to a four. Also, I forgot we got to make sure that we do it that way. Otherwise, we won't see it. OK, so now I can change either oxygen or hydrogen over here. If I put a two right there, now I have one, two times two is four hydrogens, two times two oxygen is four there. So we're going to get rid of this and get rid of this one. So 
So now I have four hydrogens on each side. I have four oxygens on each side. Let's double check to make sure that we're correct. So we're going to have two times two is four. Two times two is four. That's good. I have two oxygens here, and I have two times one is another two. So that's four. And then I have two times two hydrogens is four. So we're good. So what is our molar ratio? Our molar ratio is molar. Ugh. Our molar ratio is two. Excuse me. To one right here. There's no number right there, so that means that it's going to be a one. To two, to that two right there. Okay, so we are good with our molar ratio. Again, I like to go ahead and make it bold and change the color just so we can see it later on. Okay, so now we have our balanced chemical equation. So what do we need to do? We need to start the stoichiometry. So we're going to go ahead and start the stoichiometry problem. And we're going to do that. By right here, we're going to start with the mass in the problem. In this case, I have 0.77 grams of water. So we're going to start with 0.77 grams of water, which is H2O, which hopefully everybody knows. Okay, and we're going to put our times in a line. Now, again, when we do this, we have to go ahead and put grams in the bottom. So whatever we started off with, we start off with grams of water here. So that means on the bottom, we have to put grams of water, but we're gonna do the molar mass and I'm gonna do it a little bit quicker. I know that there's one oxygen, which is 16, plus two hydrogens, which are one each. So the molar mass of water is 18 grams, okay? You just got to make this 14, so we're going to pop that up. Okay, and that's 18 grams of H2O. And that, for that, we're going to use our molar mass. And so that 18 grams is the molar mass of water, and that's equal to one mole of H2O. Okay, so we have those, uh, those in there. Again, I always one too many. And we're going to highlight this. I mean, not highlight, but underline it. Um, so I have grams of H2O here, and I have grams of H2O here in the bottom. Because of that, I can go ahead and I can get rid of those. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. And now I have moles of water. So our next step says here, I'm going to use my molar ratio to convert from moles of what I have to moles of what I need. So I have moles of water, so I have two moles of water, and I need to go to what is the mass of hydrogen peroxide. I have two moles of hydrogen peroxide. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put our times in a line, but I have moles of water here. So on the bottom here, we're going to put moles of water, and how many moles of water do we have? That's our molar ratio right here, two moles of water. So we're going to go down here and we're going to put two moles of H2O and on top we're going to we're going to peroxide so I have two moles of hydrogen peroxide so we're going to put in here two moles of H2O2 okay so they're equal to each other okay Make sure that's right. And then we're going to underline this again. Now, once I underline this, okay, I can look at it and I say, okay, I can get rid of moles of water and moles of water. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my moles of water on top and bottom. Because, again, anything over top of itself is the same as one and we can get rid of. So now I have moles of H2O or hydrogen peroxide. We want to know the mass. So what's our next step? We're going to convert from moles to grams using our molar mass. So I'm going to put my times in a line, but we're going to put moles of water on top. When I'm using molar mass, it's always equal to one mole. So on the bottom here, we're going to put in one mole of H2O. 
two. And that's going to equal our molar mass. Now, if I look at this again, I'm just going to go ahead and look at it. Oxygen, I have two of them. There's 16 each, so that's 32. Plus two hydrogens is 34. So I know that this right here is going to be 34 grams of H2O2. And then I'll put my equal sign. And we're going to go ahead and underline this to make sure that we have it right. And what do we have to do next? We have to get rid of anything that's on top and bottom again. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of our moles of uh, hyd hydrogen peroxide because I have it on top and I have it on bottom. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. So now when you look at it, we see we've kind of got rid of that. The only thing that I have left is the unit that I need in the problem. So we're going to go over here and we're going to put grams uh, of H2O2. And so how do I figure out this right here? I have to do my math. So let's go ahead and pull up the calculator. We'll move it over here just a little bit, clear it, and we're start with 0.77. We multiply by the top, we divide by the bottom. So anytime I have one, I don't have to do it. So it's 0 0.77 divided by 18 times 2 divided by 2 times 34 equals 1.45 and 4 repeating. So 1.45, it doesn't really matter if we go where we go from there. Now, again, we'll double check that. Again, here's another one. I have this two here, and I have this two there. Can I get rid of them? Yes, I can get rid of them. Matter of fact, I can get rid of this one and that one, but it just makes sense that we're going to do it. So we're just going to leave it there, and we're not going to do the twos. So let's go ahead, because I have it on top and bottom. If I both play it, then divide by it, it's the same as I'm doing anything by one. 0.77 divided by 18 times 34 equals and that's my number. So I got to do something with this number, and that is, you are right, that is significant figures. How many is it? Well, it's only two. Remember, preceding zeros, never significant. Trailing zero is significant if there's a decimal. But there's no trailing zeros here. So there's only these two right here places are significant. So that means I need to have two. There's two. So I'm right there. This five. Because there's numbers after it, we automatically round up. So we're going to get rid of uh, this, pull that over, and give that a 5. There we go. There's our answer. 1.5 grams of hydrogen peroxide okay, are created when 0.77 grams of water are produced. I should say we need 1.5 grams of hydrogen peroxide to produce 0.77 grams of water. Hey, that's it for uh, practice sheet number two, problem number five. As always, go Mohawks. Nelson out.